you, you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. Let's discover how a couple months, but it's in this, this, this enough for you to know what's up in the hood. doesn't matter. You're always doing crap for your mom. Why don't she, you, what she, about me? No. What about what you? What is she? What do you I mean, what about me? I was going to be late. Look, okay. It doesn't matter. No, down. no. This is... <sighs> hey, are you okay? Do I look okay? I'm going to kill him, I swear. Don't cry. Your mascara is running. You're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? I'm Marina. I'm Pepper. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Pepper. Do you want to go somewhere? Where? Anywhere. Come on, let's go. All right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Marina! Hi. Where the hell have you been? Um, you what? Were you ditching? Dude, you need to chill. It's not that serious. Who the hell are you? No, no, no okay. come on, no, let's go. Hey, Pat. Oh, hey, Marina. How are you? I'm good, how about you? I'm all right, look, uh, I'm sorry about yesterday. That was totally unnecessary. No, 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 it's fine. It was okay. Seth's fault. He shouldn't have been posed, you know. Mm -hmm. But we were having such a great time, you know. Yeah. It's not your fault. No, dude, it's totally my fault. It is. We should definitely have, like, you know, maybe stayed in the school or something. No, but That's my Seth fault, you know. I was... Um. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, I had fun yesterday. Yeah, me too. Did you see? He was so mad. I know. That was so uncomfortable. I'm gonna put you on a leash. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so he has some serious problems. He needs to stop being so territorial over you. I feel bad, but it's kind of like, why are you crazy? <laughs> why are you crazy? Dude, oh and the god. way he freaking punched the freaking locker that one day. Did you oh see my me god. jump? <laughs> like, oh my god. I feared for your life. Oh God. He has some oh, anger wow. issues. Why do you even like him? That's crazy. Well, I mean, he has a really good scholarship, you know? Yeah, but what about his personality? Like, well, I mean, he just, he's kind of impatient, I guess. Yeah, but you, know, you haven't told me anything why you like him. Well, my parents like him. That's not good enough. You have to, you have to pick someone who you love, not some, someone that your parents pick out for you. That's true. He's not good for you. He really isn't, Marina. Well, you know there's only one way to find out if you're as crazy as he is. How? Oh. Well... Hello, can I speak to the parents or guardian of uh, Marina Marbles? Yes, this is her. Well, hello, this is Mr. Baldwin from Truman Middle College. I'm calling in regards of Marina Marbles. Are you aware of her absence today? No. Are you sure it was her? Yes, I'm very sure it was her, but uh, I think we need to set up a conference. Okay, I'll be on my way. Let's play this video. Oh my 
Dean of Marbles, can you please come to the Dean's office? What you ditched school for? Seth told me all about it. Seth isn't even who you think he is. He makes you miserable. You! Don't speak. Marina, get this freak out of my face. Me and you are gonna go home and have a long talk about morals. You wanna talk about morals, but is it morally right to make your daughter date a psychopath? Oh, but he has a scholarship, right? Oh, yeah, but he's nuts, just like you. This entire thing is nuts. This is natural. Dad is not at all. But this, this isn't in the Bible. I'm not dealing with this. If I were to meet myself back in time, it wouldn't be that hard to just think about what I'm gonna tell myself. I'm just gonna be like, there are certain times in life where like you're gonna you're gonna go through stuff where it's obviously gonna be natural and everybody's obviously gonna go through this once in their life. And um, to not really care, I think like, I would tell myself to not really care what people say because sometimes people tell me one thing and then I take it too personal when I know they're just meaning it as a joke. I would tell my younger self that there are a set of negative rights that you have when it comes to masculinity and expressing yourself. Oh, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be fit, you're supposed to have a girlfriend, you're supposed to have a job, you know, have money, you're supposed to have all these things that other men have, like, you know, you're supposed to have a phone, iPhone 7 or whatever. And those set of negative rights are you have the right not to be ridiculed for expressing yourself like any other human would. You have the right not to be forced to conform to a manufactured form of what it means to be a man. And third of all, and this is the most important one, you have the right not to have your individuality stripped away if I could go back in time with the knowledge that I have and tell my 10 year old self how to be a man, I think it would kind of be rejecting uh, that notion. And I think I would be telling my 10 year old self a lot of the things uh, that my earlier role models did at the time, which was just be yourself and more people are going to, are going to enjoy who you are if you enjoy who you are yourself. Well, men have a certain role to live up to, 
they are supposed to be portrayed as strong, not show any kind of emotion. If they even show at least one emotion like sadness or you're starting to cry, then the uh, media along with everyone else in the world will just portray you as weak, won't respect you as much. Wake up, because the world is full of people that has their own opinions about what a man is. Once you ask someone to define it, you realize that uh, it's really, it really can't be anything. I mean, I know how uh, it has been described to me, but I know anyone could counter with anything that I say would be defined as a man. Uh, so I guess, I guess there really is no definition of a man. Many people have always looked for this concept we call perfection. As we are pressured by peers, society, and media, we begin to think we can actually capture perfection. However, as we live our everyday lives, we find ourselves doing things to change our natural stance and be what everybody else wants us to be, such as wear makeup, acrylic nails, weave, extensions, and use injections. Many of these activities are the acts of females. Can women honestly be perfect? No. Better yet, does perfection actually exist? This is something we all want and need to know. I think perfection exists in everyone's mind, but like not in reality. I don't believe perfection exists. I believe it's a myth. I don't think perfection exists because we're human. Perfection um, does not exist because nothing is perfect. Um, and then if it was, who's, in whose eyes would it be perfect? There's too many people on the earth for anything to be agreed upon as perfect. Um, there is no real perfection. No one's ever going to be perfect. Everyone has their own um, view as far as what is perfection. Um, society sometimes wants to portray perfection in one way, but that is, again, society's per, um, way of perceiving perfection. I think a perfect woman is a woman that believes in individuality and just really hones into what she was given by God and owns that and just loves who she is and where she comes from and doesn't uh, fall into the beliefs of other people and what they think she should be. If there was a perfect woman, I think the characteristics she would have would make her a lot like a Disney movie character. I feel like there is no perfect woman, but a woman that embraced her, who she was, as is, and 
her unique traits, her unique personality, um, her character would be as close as perfection can get. I don't think that there's such a thing as a perfect woman. I mean, I guess, like, like I said, I think everyone has their own version of what perfection is, but, um, and I think that that's like, I, th I think it's, uh, you know, I, I think it's up to people to decide what they think is perfect, but I don't think anyone should have to be upheld to anyone else's standard of perfection. Uh, the perfect woman in my eyes would be somebody that has confidence, um, very high self-esteem, doesn't let anyone deter her from what she wants to accomplish in life, um, somebody that's um, very well orientated in what it is they want to do with themselves and really doesn't let anyone deter them from that, no matter what cost. Over time, the standards for women's appearances have changed drastically. Women have and always will be held to a high standard. Yeah, I do think the standards of perfection has changed. I think back in the 50s and 60s, the perfect woman would be a woman in the household cooking and cleaning and preparing the home, and that was considered a perfect woman. Do I think the standards of perfection have changed over time? Um. Yeah, well, what women think of perfection in themselves, I think that's definitely changed over time. I don't know if the standard of perfection has changed, but I think what women think being perfect is has changed. I think the image of beauty has changed over time um, and the fact that what is portrayed in the media um, as far as what women should look like and what's acceptable. I think the standard of perfection has changed over time. We are now set to a very higher standard. We are not the women that used to be uh, staying at home moms. Now we have the careers, we have the children, we have our husbands, we have our friends, and we have to make time for everything. Women have changed significantly throughout history where, I mean, now women have rights, you know, and women can pursue a career and be independent and pretty much do, do whatever they, you know, is all the stuff that men can do. And I, I definitely don't think it was like that in the past. Um, yeah, I think that's a good thing. Uh, I, I don't think, I don't think things like having rights and having freedoms and, you know, being able to be independent, like I think those things should be gender neutral. You know, it, it, it shouldn't matter if you're a man or a woman. Absolutely, I think that the media's lack of diversity affects women and everybody else in the world. It's had a personal effect on me. So as a child growing up, I felt unpretty. And I used to stare in the mirror for hours trying to imagine what I would look like with straight hair. And um, if I would be better if I wasn't as smart as I was. I definitely think the media's lack of diversity has a lot of a lot to do with how women think of themselves. Um, I, I mean, not just women, but everybody. What everybody thinks of themselves, they want to they want to see who they are reflected in the media they consume. So, I don't think anyone's like equally represented in the media. Um, you know, I, I think they try, like I said, I, I think they try to create this idea of perfection based on whatever they think that is, the perfect body or, um, and I, I think it's, you know, if you don't see people that look like you in the media, it's just kind of weird, you know, you probably walk around wondering like, why am I being underrepresented? Is there something wrong with me? Uh, I think I think it can create that effect. Uh, in the media, no, now the media, does put a lot of pressure on a woman to be perfect and a superwoman and we're supposed to juggle all these things at once and really not complain about it.
media's portrayal of women affects me on a daily basis. I'm always thinking about what people will think of me when I enter into a room, if they'll prejudge me because of how I look or how I act, and will they just fit me into this one particular box because they assume I'm supposed to be a certain way because of how women are portrayed on media. I think the media portrays women in a very rigid, uh, one-sided view, um, which is the standard of a Caucasian woman um, with long blonde hair, thin blue eyes, um, and it's been portrayed in the media as, as long as I can remember. I think women are portrayed positively in the media. Um, we really don't want to see the bad side of women because a woman is most of the time a superwoman. We do everything. We have our household, we have our careers, we have our friends, we have a social life. Sometimes I do feel like I need to be perfect. Um, and then I realized that it's not important and that's, um, it's very freeing to let go of the image of perfection in the media and I feel like I could function better without it so I just let all that go. I try to let it go when I walk out the door. Worry about it, yes, but I get to the point, you know, that part in the Princess Diaries where she's like trying to get pretty and it's like, well, that's as good as it's gonna get because there's, you can't, you just can't. I do not worry about being perfect when I leave the house. Um, when, it, when I work, I try to do my best work. Um, it's never going to be perfect. So I, I try to do the best that I can and I try to be like, you know, the best human being that I can. But no, I don't think I ever try to be perfect. For the younger women out there, uh, I would say to just not pay attention to what the media puts out there as far as what beautiful is or what perfection is. It's really everyone's own special definition. Everyone has their own views. Um, whatever it is that they want to do, they should just go for it. Um, the physical part, as long as you feel you're healthy, as long as you feel comfortable in your skin, as long as you're not feeling pressured to be a certain size. Just don't get caught up in the hype. It's just hype and the media is pushing um, unrealistic goals and uh, standards and to never try to fit the mold because it's gonna change and then you'll never be able to fit ever because it will keep changing and you won't be able to keep up. So just be true to who you are, love yourself, love the body you're in, love the skin that you're in and keep going.